Hello, this morning I'm talking with Bob Aldens, the owner of Car Business, and we're going to discuss the best ways to get the most value for your trade-in on your used car. G'day, Bob. How are you? G'day, Monty. I'm, mate, I'm fantastic. Getting close to Christmas, so uh, yes, good time for a break and a great time to get your car ready for sale. Now, Bob, we've known each other for a while, and I've bought a number of cars off of you. Uh, what I'm more interested in, I've always handed down my uh, my previous cars to my son, but for people who want to, to sell their car and realize the greatest value in that process, can you give us the, the best do's and don'ts? Sure, mate. Um, look, it never ceases to amaze me the condition that people present their vehicle in when they want to trade it or sell it privately. And, you know, there's just, there's 10 suggestions, tips, ideas that I've got that will help someone who's looking to sell their car maximise the value. And they're not difficult things to do. A lot of home handy people could do it by themselves. The others, you're going to have to bring in a contractor to, uh, to get the work done. But no matter what you spend, you will recover that by way of an increased trade value or an increased value when you're selling it privately. So, you know, let me get into them. Uh, and there's some really obvious ones. And, and Monty, the first one is one of my favourites, and it's those gutter rashes that people have on their alloy wheels where they park too close to the gutter. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. And I'm guilty too. You know, I've just got a, a fairly new BMW M3 and the first day I had it, I parked too close to a gutter and $125 later I've had it fixed. Hey. It's all about first impressions, Monty. You know, when a valuer from a car dealership or a private buyer wanders around the vehicle, if they see these gutter rashes, where someone's driven into a curb, the first thing the, the professional valuer does is say how many wheels need to be repaired and then they up the ante. They can get them done for $120, $125, but they'll allow $200 a wheel to have those repairs done. And most people have at least the two curbside wheels that have uh, brushed up against the concrete gutters. So there's a couple of hundred dollars or $250 um, that is well invested to have those repaired, providing you don't do it again before you go to sell your car. <laughs> okay. Tick. And number two, number two is an interesting one, marks, scratches and dents. Now, when I have a car that I've bought or traded that's got a, a car park dent in it, um, I'll ring my mate Trevor and Trevor will come out and for about $30 per dent, he'll remove the dent so you can't see it anymore. And he is a magician. I've had some cars that I thought, no way can Trevor do anything on this. And he uses the paintless dent removal technique and prods and squeezes and pries those dents out so you can't see them anymore. And again, he's a magician. You've got to get an expert to do that. You can't do that one yourself. But boy, oh boy, does it uh, make a difference to the appearance of the car. Okay, got that one. Number three, bumper bar scratches. And you can pick those up in car parks, uh, in your own garage. And from a presentation point of view, they look terrible. Um, again, I bring in a contractor. Uh, I've got a guy called Tony Doyle from Super Finish, and he's a mobile repairer. And he'll come out to, to my my uh, store and he'll repair and repaint front and rear bars if it needs it uh, about $200 per bar providing there's not gouges that he has to fill but again that first impression walking around a vehicle you know think about it yourself Monty you see a car with scratches and marks on bumper bars the first thing you think of I'm going to have to get those repaired I don't like the look of that and in your mind, you'll think panel shop, $500, $1,000, when it can be done for half that price. Okay. I think we're now up to about yeah, four or $500 I'm putting into my car, but keep going. Mm -hmm. 
Um, number four, and you'll see this on on mainly older cars, cars that are five years of age or older, is discoloured headlights. Now, for the last 15 years, manufacturers have been using plastic in headlights, not glass. Remember the, the 70s and older, uh, we all had glass headlights, but in the last 15, maybe 20 years, uh, manufacturers have gone to a polycarbonate uh, lens for the headlight. Why? Because it's cheaper to manufacture. Um, it's light, so it reduces the, the weight of the vehicle. That improves fuel consumption or fuel economy a little bit. But those older cars, potentially the, the, the ones made in Korea, where they didn't use as good a quality plastic as they do in Japan or Europe, uh, the lenses get discoloured. So not only is that dangerous, and positively, if you're pulled up for a vehicle inspection or the police see it, um, you can be fined for driving an unroadworthy vehicle, but you don't have to replace those headlights. Um, you can get them repaired for about $100, um, where, again, uh, a professional takes off the, the discoloured portion of the headlight and applies a clear coat to it, so they look almost the same as they did when the car was first sold. Again, not a, not a huge expense, but again, that presentation. And leading on from that, in between the headlights, there's the bonnet. Um, and normal driving, day-to-day -day driving, we get chips and marks and bugs and so on. You can get the bugs off, but the chips have got to be handled. And I don't go and get them brush touch moddy. I've got a, a sneaky way to, to improve the look of that. <clears throat> and that's to go to somewhere like Super Cheap or Auto Barn or Repco and buy a bonnet protector, preferably a dark tinted one, because the chips on the bonnet are right on the leading edge where it is almost 45 degrees to the road and that's where we get our chips. Those people who are out in the country, they'll get chips further up the bonnet, which would probably re require a repair. But for we people in the city, a dark tinted bonnet protector will hide all those little chips and scratches that are on the front of the bonnet. Okay, that makes sense. It does. And the, I suppose the big deal on preparing a car for sale is what condition the car's in. Look, I've seen cars come in here with hamburger wrappers, lolly wrappers, nappies, <laughs> dirty socks, and someone says, I'd like to trade that vehicle. And I look at them, and I can't help myself, Molly. I'm, I'm getting a bit old and grumpy, and I said, look, would you take that car away and get it cleaned? And let me have another, <laughs> another look at it. But the best way to do it is to go and get it professionally detailed. They'll shampoo the carpets and the seats. They'll put some nice um, vinyl preparation or leather preparation over the seats. They'll steam clean the engine area. They'll clean your boot out. Uh, and they'll make it look as best as it possibly can. And that investment's a couple of hundred dollars, about 250 if you go the whole hog. Uh, if it's a four-wheel drive, probably a little bit more up to 300, but it just changes the complexion of the vehicle. And look, in one of my articles, <laughs> I've, and my wife, Susie, I'm sorry, but when our better halves get out of bed in the morning, the first thing they do is put on makeup and do their hair. Well, that's exactly the same with a car. <laughs> You've got to make it look as good as it possibly can. Think about the celebrities. Kim Kardashian won't get out of a room until she's put a makeup on and done a done a hair. Well, we want to present our vehicle in the best possible manner. So you've got to do the the interior and exterior cleaning, pre preferably a detail by a professional. Okay. Well, my tally puts me at close to a thousand dollars here, Bob, and you're only halfway done. Well, I'm nearly done. I've only got uh, I've only got. Four, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I've got four to go. But um, every dollar that you spend on preparing your car for sale, you'll recoup double when you go to sell it, or when the valuer at the dealership puts a price on it. There's a couple of really important ones coming up, and I'll, I'll skip the glass. But you know, if you've got chips or, or cracks in your windscreen, you've got to have them repaired. Um, 
One of the most important ones is to make sure that your service history is available to the potential buyer. Uh, if your logbook hasn't been filled in by the people who've been servicing it, go back to them, get them to put their stamp and the date that they did their work in the service manual. Um, that is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of value. In fact, in some cars, the more luxurious imported cars, it's thousands of dollars. So it's a really important thing for customers to think of when they're having their car serviced that they make sure that the dealer's done the stamp. The other thing that I'd really suggest is a strong one is to get a safety certificate done. If you're selling it privately, you must have one done. But even if you're trading it with the dealership, um, it costs about $80 to have a safety certificate completed plus any work that's required. But if you leave the safety certificate on the front seat of your car when you present it for the value to put a price on it, he'll know that his workshop doesn't have to do it. In the mind of the valuer, he allows about $1,000 for mechanical work that he can't see, whether it's a two-year-old car or a seven-year-old car or a ten-year-old car. If you can prove to the, to the dealership that you've had all the work done that's required for them to be able to put it straight onto their used car yard, again, that will save you a lot of money. Tyres, we all know that tyres are the, the major safety aspect of a car. If you've got an uh, unroadworthy or un, uh, illegal wear on your tyres, the dealer will allow $250 for each corner, so it's $1,000 if you've got to replace all four, whereas you can go and buy brand new non-branded tyres for about $100 to $125 or even less if you go for second-hand tyres, Monty. And again, that's just a great way to reduce the reconditioning cost in the dealer's mind when you go to trade it. The last one that I've got is, is torn trim. That's a bit more difficult. If you've got a cigarette burn in your seat, you can find an upholstery a car trimmer and they'll unstitch and nip up the bit of the trim that's got that cigarette burn in um, and make it go away. I do that as a, as a dealer. Um, if you've got a tear, you've then got to make a decision whether you get that repair done or whether you leave it alone. Me, I always get uh, torn trim repaired because I want my cars to look as perfect as I possibly can without going crazy. So Monty, they're the 10 tips. Um, I'm really happy to for, for customers to contact me and I can give them the names of contractors, give them some advice. I'll even look at their car and give them some tips on their particular car on how they can maximise the value. But if a valuer looks at a particular car and says, I'm going to spend about $2,000 on that car, I think it's worth $10,000, or he looks at a car that's got $2,000 to spend, he's going to save five or $6,000 because not only the cost of repairs, but the time that it's going to take before it's prepared and back on the used car lot. Fair so enough, what do you reckon, that, mate? I reckon that makes sense. Is there is there a, a, a threshold where the value of the car just doesn't warrant that sort of work? I mean, if it's a if it's a high high kilometerage car and it's over a decade old and it's maybe only worth three grand, and yeah, you, well, you've talked about a thousand dollars worth of stuff easily. Sure. Look, if a car is older than 10 years and it's done more than, say, 200,000 kilometres, I'd probably still get it detailed, but I wouldn't necessarily do the rest of it. Um, these, these tips are for cars really up to seven years of age, um, but that's also dependent on what you've got. If someone's got a, a V8 manual Commodore or Falcon that's appealing in the marketplace, I'd probably get all the work done because I know I'm going to get top dollar for my car. Right. The older the car, the higher the kilometres, it's debatable. If the, it, and, and I suppose the way to think about this is the, the dealership that I'm going to, is this a car that they're going to keep and resell on their lot? If it's not, do the basics, do a wash and vac and clean the glass yourself. Uh, make it as presentable as possible, even get that safety certificate and throw it on the seat 
because at least they know that there's not thousands of dollars worth of mechanical repairs to do. Perfect, Bob. Um, Bob, if somebody does want to take you up on your offer for some of the services you're offering, what's the best way to find you or get a hold of you? Okay, well they can search for car business um, on, on the internet, carbusiness.com.au. They can email me at bob.aldens at carbusiness.com.au. They can find car business on Facebook or Twitter, because I'm there. Or they can call me on 0418 748 498. Lots of ways to get in touch with the car guy, Monty. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks, Bob. And I uh, look forward to doing this uh, in the future on another topic. Sounds great. Love to do it. <laughs>